Okay, so if you're listening to this, you're probably getting ready for the IELTS. And yeah. I bet that speaking section is kind of scary. Oh, yeah. Especially part two. Definitely. It's understandable. You get a topic in just one minute to prepare and then... Then bam. Two minutes of like, wow, the examiner. It's a lot of pressure. It is. I remember when I first took it, two minutes felt like forever. I bet. But hey, that's exactly why we're doing this deep dive today. Absolutely. You sent in some notes from IELTS, buddy. Yep. And we're going to like unpack their expert advice. Sounds good. And hopefully help you totally nail that long-term section. You know, it's interesting how much anxiety that part two creates for people. Right. It's like you're under this microscope and the clock is just ticking away. It's true. The time crunch can really throw people off. For sure. But the cool thing is IELTS Buddy has some really clever tactics. Oh, yeah. To help you really make the most of that one-minute prep time. I like it. One of the things that stood out to me was their focus on the five W's and an H. Oh. You know those classic journalism questions? Like who, what, when, where, why? Exactly. And how? I mean, we've all heard of those, but I never thought to use them for IELTS prep. Right. So how does that even work? Yeah, how does it work? Well, the IELTS topic card usually gives you prompts that cover like some of those questions. Okay. But your job in that prep time is to jot down the missing question words cool, cool. that relate to the topic. So it's like filling in the gaps to gotcha. get this fuller picture. So let's say you get a topic card that says, describe someone who has had an, an important influence on your life. Okay. So they might give you prompts for who the person is, yeah. what qualities they have, and why they were influential. Right. But they probably won't say when you met them or where. Okay. So in your notes, you'd add those missing whens and wheres. I get it. So by adding those extra question words, yeah, you're basically brainstorming more talking points. Exactly. So that way, even if you totally blank during those two minutes, you've got a backup. It's like giving yourself a roadmap so you don't get lost or start rambling. When I first started prepping for the IELTS, I was so focused on memorizing big, fancy words. Yeah, I bet. That I never thought about the structure of my answer. Yeah. This 5W strategy seems so simple, but so smart. It is. And what's interesting is it links directly to the IELTS scoring criteria. Oh, really? The examiners are looking for coherence and cohesion oh. in your answer. Mm. So by using that 5W's framework... Yeah you naturally create a more structured, logical answer, which can help boost your score. Awesome. Okay. So we got one brilliant tip down. We do. What else does IELTS Buddy recommend? Well, this one really stood out to me. Yeah, okay. They talk about the power of putting a story into your response. Wait, a story? Yeah. In just two minutes? I know it sounds crazy, but it can work. Okay. I'm intrigued. Okay. Think about it. Stories are engaging. For sure. They pull the listener in and they make your message memorable. Yeah. And when you're in a crazy situation like the IELTS, a story can actually help you relax and sound more natural. Yeah. It's like you're sharing something personal and familiar, which can boost your confidence. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But I'm still trying to picture how that would actually play out in an IELTS response. Okay, let's go back to the example of the influential person. Mm -hmm. In their sample answer... The speaker talks about how they overcame their shyness in a school play because of this teacher. So instead of just listing the teacher's qualities, they're showing those qualities. Yes, through a personal story. That's actually really clever. And the best part is the story doesn't have to be some big life-changing event. Right. It can be a simple story that shows a point and adds a little something extra to your response. You know, I remember reading that sample answer on IELTS Weddy. Yeah. And I was surprised by how smooth it all sounded. Yeah. It didn't feel forced or rehearsed at all. And that natural flow is key. Yeah. Because it goes back to those IELTS scoring criteria again. Okay. The examiners want a clear and organized answer, but they also want to see that you can speak smoothly and naturally and yeah. not sound like you're just reciting something you memorized. Got it. It's about sounding like a human. Yeah. Not a robot. Totally. It's funny because when I was prepping, I thought I had to sound like a robot, you know, super formal and like no ums or ahs. Yeah, I know what you mean. I thought using filler words would kill my score. That's so common. A lot of people yeah. think that. Right. But IELTS Buddy actually says that's not true. Okay. They don't say to like never use fillers. Okay. But to use them in a way that makes sense. So it's not about being totally silent when you're thinking. Right. But more about using those fillers so they don't distract the listener. Exactly. Think of it like punctuation. Oh, okay. When you're writing like a well-placed pause can actually make your speech stronger. That makes so much more sense. <laughs> so it's not about sounding like a machine. No. 
yeah. but about using those pauses the right way. Right. Okay, so now that we've got that cleared up, yeah. let's talk about vocabulary. Oh, vocabulary. A big one for IELTS. I remember feeling like I needed to memorize a zillion fancy words. It's easy to fall into that trap. It is. But IELTS Buddy has a better approach. Okay, what's that? They say to focus on vocabulary that you're already comfortable with okay. and to make sure you're using it correctly. So instead of trying to impress the examiner with words I barely know, right? it's better to use words I'm confident with and know how to use, right? Exactly. That shows you have a good grasp of vocabulary. Okay. And remember, the examiners are also listening for good grammar. So it's not just about the words themselves, but how you use them in sentences. Yes. They recommend using a variety of different grammatical structures. Like what? Like different tenses, complex sentences, a mix of phrases. Yeah. You know? Okay. It's about showing you're flexible with English. This is making me think of that IELTS buddy sample answer again. Uh-huh. They didn't use any crazy hard words, but their sentences were really well put together. Exactly. It sounded natural, but also sophisticated. Without being too complicated. It's about communicating, not showing off. Right. You know, it's interesting how these IELTS tips could help anyone with public speaking. Oh, absolutely. Not just for the exams. It's all about being clear, concise, and engaging. I'm already thinking about how I can use this stuff in my work presentations. Exactly. I feel like we've covered a lot already. We have. We've talked about using that prep time the right way, the five W's, telling stories, using fillers strategically, and like mastering vocabulary and grammar. It's just a lot. It is. So what else did IELTS Buddy say about conquering part two? Well, they had some good advice about preparation and practice. Okay. Which are so important for building confidence. So when you say preparation, you don't just mean like practicing English schools in general, right? Right. IELTS Buddy specifically recommends getting familiar with common IELTS speaking topics. Okay. Like work, education, hobbies, travel, current events, you know. That makes sense. So if you already have some ideas about those topics, yeah. it's less work you have to do during the exam when you see that topic card. Exactly. It's like having a mental toolbox. Okay. The more you can talk about different subjects, uh -huh. the better you'll feel when you get that topic. Okay. That's smart. But what about practice? Yeah. I mean, besides just like talking about random stuff. Yeah. How can you really feel that exam pressure? Well, IELTS Buddy has a cool idea. What's that? They say to record yourself talking about different topics. Oh, like pretend I'm taking the exam. Exactly. Set a timer for two minutes and just go. Hmm. It sounds simple, but it really works. Why is that? It gets you used to speaking under pressure. Oh, okay. And you can listen back and see how you did. Oh, I like that. So I can hear when I hesitate. Yeah. Or when I use the same words too much. Exactly. Or if you go off topic. It's like having my own IELTS coach. Exactly. You can catch those little things you might not notice while you're speaking. Okay, so we've got preparation down, practice down. We do. Is there anything else we should be doing before the exam? Well, IELTS Buddy says it's good to get feedback. Oh, yeah, from like an IELTS teacher or tutor? Exactly. I was just going to ask about that. Sometimes <laughs> you need someone else to help you. For sure. They can give you advice on your pronunciation, okay. your grammar. Your fluency. Right. All yeah. those little details that can make a difference. Exactly. You know, as we're talking, I'm realizing these tips aren't just about passing the aisles. Yeah, I know, right? They're about being a better communicator. It's all connected. The skills you build for aisles, mm -hmm. like organizing your thoughts, telling stories, speaking smoothly, using good vocabulary. Right. Those are skills you can use anywhere. This deep dive has been so helpful. We've learned so much from IELTS, buddy. We have. From using the five W's and stories to mastering those fillers yeah. and getting expert feedback. It's been great breaking it all down with you. It has. As we finish up, I want to leave our listeners with one last thought. Okay. The most important thing you can bring to the IELTS besides all this preparation yeah. is confidence. Believe in yourself, trust your skills, and remember, you've got this. Confidence is key. <laughs> Don't let those nerves win. You've got this. Go in there and show off those amazing English skills. You got it. We're rooting for you. <laughs>